Hi, it's Chester Tupple at Blue Pecan Computer Training. In this video, we're going to look at some VBA code. What I want to be able to do is to create a report from this source data that will basically look like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some conditional formatting so that if our sales amount have met the target, we'll go green, otherwise red. But it's also going to add these two other columns stating job prospects for the salesperson pretty bad if they haven't met the sales target good if they have but also working out their commission uh, the commission is eight percent on the difference between the sales amount and the sales target now before i even start writing the vba code for this i'm going to create uh, names for these two sales worksheet names so uh, I'm going to start with this one here, the sales target value. So I've clicked in the cell and I'm going over to the name box and I'm going to call this one sales target. And this one I'm going to call commission rate or com rate. So com rate. I press in to, to store that name. That'll just be, be, make it a whole lot easier to refer to those cells within my VBA code. Okay, so I've started a sub-procedure for you just by giving it a name, uh, sales sheet. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just declare a couple of variables for both the sales target and for the uh, commission rate. And that's going to relate directly to those named ranges that we've just created. So there are my two variables. And then what I'm going to do is set them. So I'm going to say the sales target is equal to the range that I've called uh, sales underscore target. And I'm going to set commission rate to the range that I've called com rate. Okay, now there's a number of other variables that I need to set up, so I'm gonna do that and then get back to you. Okay, so I've created one, two, three, four other variables. Uh, the first one, sales fig as range, so that's gonna be the individual sales figure for a particular salesperson. Uh, the sales field will be the whole of the sales column. That's what that's gonna to refer to. I need to set that in a minute. Job prospect sale, well, that'll be the new column we're gonna create for job prospects. Um, it's gonna be the individual sale for the particular record. And the commission sale, well, that's gonna be over here in column D. And again, it will be the individual commission sale for that particular salesperson. What I'm gonna do next is actually set the sales field variable, and that needs to refer to the whole of, well, all the cells in column B that contain sales figure. So set sales field to equal the range. Well, it starts in B2, and it ends, well, I'm gonna kind of future-proof this. So if I do add another salesperson, um, it will also pick that up. So I would say, well, it starts, we've already ascertained in B2, but what I want to do is from B2, go to the last value, the last cell that contains a value in that column. Now this is the same as doing um, uh, control down arrow key on your keyboard, it takes you to the last cell. So we've already got the first cell, or well, the last cell is going to essentially be B11 at the moment. If you did control down arrow key on your keyboard in Excel, it would take you down to there, or whatever the last cell is, the last cell that contains a value. So to get down to that position, I can use Excel, uh, end Excel down. And that would take me down to that last cell. Okay, so that's set that variable. The next thing we need to do is create some column headings, so column C and column D. Now, I'm just gonna paste in the code for that rather than writing it all out, and then I'll explain exactly what it, the code actually does here. So range C1, you're gonna enter the value, the text, job prospects, let's bring that back up. Uh, and in D1, the text commission. So those are essentially the column headings. 
and then with range C1 to D1 I'm changing the interior color to match the interior color for the headings for columns A and B. Font color well that's white RGB value for white and then I'm going to change um, well I'm going to embolden the font and I'm going to auto fit the columns. So that's what that bit of code actually Okay, so the rest of the code, what it's got to do is go through each of these numbers. And if, for example, Bob has met his sales target, then we need to say good in here. Uh, otherwise, we need to say something not so good, pretty bad, in fact. And then over in the commission column, if, they have, if Bob has met his sales target, we need to calculate the commission, otherwise return a zero. So once we've done that for... For Bob, we then need to go down and do it for Bill, then Ben, then Bernard, etc., etc. So to do that, we're going to use a for each next structure, and within there, in that structure, within that structure is going to be uh, an if statement, an if else statement. So let's start this for each next statement. So we would say for each. So it's for each sales figure, that's the uh, variable that I set up here, for each sales figure in the sales field, it'll sort out the capital capitalization in a minute. Okay, and then next sales fig. Okay. The first thing we'll do within this for each next loop is to set two variables, one for the job prospects variable. So I'm going to use control space just to complete that variable name. And you wouldn't use long variable names like that in reality within a sub procedure. I'm just making I'm making them long and descriptive just to aid understanding here. So it will be uh, the sales fig. And what we'll do is basically say that for the first job prospect sale, that is the sales figure. So it will be Bob's sales figure offset, if I could spell it, by um, no rows and one column. That's essentially how you use the offset figure. So basically that means that cell there. And then we can do the same for the commission sale. Commission sale equals sales fig. Control space is a nice little shortcut key. It gives you an IntelliSense list if there's more than one variable that starts with sales, for example. Dot offset, well, that'd be no rows and two columns which is essentially this cell here. Okay, so we've set those two variables. Okay, so we've now got to use an if then else statement to basically evaluate whether this value is greater than or equal to the sales target. So let's start that. We're gonna say if sales figure, sales fig is greater than or equal to sales target. Now if you remember the sales target is set to refer to the sales target named range within our worksheet which is this cell here so 60,000. So if it's greater than or equal to that then now what we want quite a few things to happen if that is true we want this cell to change color to sort of a green color. We want it to say good in this cell and we wanted to work out some sort of commission value in this cell. Okay so let's deal with the formatting first of all. So we're looking at formatting the sales fig cell. Now what we can do is we can say with that cell we can change the background color so that's interior dot color and I'm going to do, I'm going to use an RGB value for this, and I have to know that the green I want is 112,173,71. Now, if you don't know where to get those values from, 
what I do is I just pick a color here and then if you go to more colors and go to the custom tab it gives you those RGB values down there and you just pop those values in that order into the RGB part of your code and the last thing we want to do is just change the font color to white and again I'll use a RGB value for this just to be consistent here and that's just 248 comma 248 comma 248 and then I can say end with okay so that just does the formatting for us the job prospect cell if you remember that's one column on from our sales figure cell uh, we want to just say good and the commission cell now that is actually going to be a calculation so the commission calculation is essentially the difference between the sales amount and the sales target multiplied by the commission rate so Bob won't get any but for example, Bill would get commission on about 24,000, 8% of 24,000. So we kind of need to write that calculation into our code. So uh, it would be sales fig. Sales fig uh, minus sales target. time sales rate or commission rate rather and just do a little bit of formatting on that value we'd like it as in currency format so you can use the number format property and the number format we're going to use and you put it in quotation marks we want a currency symbol and we'll use this format and I'll show you where you get those formats from if you're not familiar with that for example if I clicked here and I well let's right click format cells and you can see you've got loads of different formats so if I went to currency and I chose say that and went to custom you can see the format there you can just copy that into your code but don't forget to put it in quotation marks as I've done here. Now this is what we want to do in this part of the code if the sales target has been reached. But we also need to cater for salespeople that haven't met the sales target. So this is where we can do the else bit. So else, so if this isn't true, else, this is the same as the value of false if you're writing an if statement into Excel directly using a, f a formula. So we could copy some of this now um, just to make life slightly easier for ourselves. Let me just indent that a little bit. So the interior color, we're not going to have the same green. I think what we'll do is go for a red color. So already found out what these colors are that gives a nice red background color to the cell the font color is going to be white and that's okay now the job prospects is not going to be good it's going to be pretty bad not so good for those salespeople and the commission Cell. Well, I can still copy this. Just make a few changes. That's going to be zero with the same number format. Okay. Now I need to close the if statement with end if. Easy to forget. End if. And that's completed that part of the code. 
The one thing left to do, and that's just to apply borders to these cells where we're going to have the results of our evaluation of these sales amounts, just like we've got borders on these cells. So I'm going to paste that in so you can see exactly how it works. It's similar to what we did earlier on in the sub procedure where we referenced a range of cells based on a cell value down to the last cell consecutive cell that contained a value in that column and this time we're doing it for two cells so we're saying range c1 to d1 dot end xl down so that will essentially select all of those cells down to the last value and what i've done is just applied some border formatting so borders dot line star equals xl continuous so that's enough just to give us that, those basic borders. Let's run our sub procedure. Let's see if it works. If I press play, there you have it. You have your conditional formatting, you have your job prospects and your commission values, or your zeros, and you have your column headings all formatted and with borders. Okay, so thanks very much for listening. Uh, we've covered quite a lot of things there. You got the idea with your for each next loop also with your if then else structure which is quite a useful structure to get your head around if we're used to using the if function in excel you're used to it so that's like your logical test value of true value of false similar thing there but this is a great structure a looping structure so you can basically apply that if statement to each of the values in the sales column and from that you can create the values that you need in these two other columns. It's been Chester Tugwell at Blue Pecan Computer Training. Thanks very much for listening. If you've enjoyed the video, please don't forget to subscribe.